Hey, Remote Pilot 101, Jason here. Let's chat a little bit now, and I wanna share with you actually a clip from version three of our new Remote Pilot 101 ground school, really. And um, we're always updating, always working to innovate, always keep the freshest content out there. You all, many of you are lifetime members watching this, so you're gonna get access to it if you're not. I would encourage you, there's a reason Remote Pilot 101 is the largest Part 107 test prep course on the market because you not just only, you not only pass your tests with success, but most importantly, we're preparing you to be a safe real world operator with that. So in this clip, we're gonna play the clip in its entirety, just like you're gonna see it inside the Remote Pilot 101 course on this idea of radio frequencies, understanding radio frequencies. Let's play the clip. When you're working near an airport, you'll be listening to traffic going in and going out. You may even pull up the airport's automated weather frequency during the flight uh, if the airport has an ATIS or an AWOS or an ASOS. So those are different frequencies and reporting methods here. At a towered airport, you could be monitoring the tower's frequency as well. It's important to know how to make proper position reports to let other pilots know you're in the vicinity if you're at a non-towered airport and what you're actually doing. Or you have to be in contact with the tower at a towered airport. Sometimes they want you to make a position report. Sometimes, well, emergencies happen and you're going to need to say something. You see, making a position report, if you have to do one, is like ordering pizza. You just gotta figure out who I am, where I am, and what do I want or what do I wanna say? Meaning, hey, drone, I'm just a drone. If you wanna use some of your registration number, drone one, two, three, I'm a half mile west of runway 36 at 300 feet. And that's that. Advising traffic, I'll be in the vicinity 300 feet below for the next 20 minutes at Williston Airport or whatever that may be. That's just a courtesy one. Again, on a towered frequency, they're probably going to want you just to zip it. I've seen that usually 95% of the time. Very rarely does tower want you to say anything at all. And to that point, when you do make a position report, you keep it short, you keep it informative, don't go on at length with what you're doing. You don't want to tie up the frequency with unnecessary chatter. You also want to make sure you're on the correct frequency and aware of the airspace you're in because the busier the airspace, the more chatter you're going to hear on the radio. So the first thing I want you to look at is, um, let's just look down here. Let's look at the Fort Lauderdale area. Did you know there's actually three airports with Fort Lauderdale in the name? There's the Fort Lauderdale Executive Airport. There's the Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport. And then if you look over here on the sectional chart, downtown Fort Lauderdale. There's actually a heliport on top of a building. So make sure you know the proper name of the airport as it appears on the chart, uh, and that's what you're gonna use when you make this position report. You don't wanna be the guy or gal who transmit your one mile east of Fort Lauderdale Airport at 300 feet. No factor for that traffic, don't worry about it. And someone chimes back in, which Fort Lauderdale Airport are you at? Now they all have different frequencies, but still you could easily make that mistake. So let's say you're operating near the Fort Lauderdale Executive Airport. The dashed blue line tells us it's what kind of airspace. Class D, Class Delta airspace. So that means there's a control tower. When we look, we see the letters CT, which stand for control tower, and the frequency of 120.9. There's also an unstated zero on the end of it. It's really 120.90, but they just leave it off for the sake of printing. But there's an unstated zero at the end on those uh, VHF frequencies. So Directly underneath that control tower frequency is the automated terminal information system, known as the ATIS. The frequency is 119.85, and the ATIS is recorded weather report that's updated on the top of the hour. They're basically, in a nutshell, reading you the current METAR, is what they're basically doing. Beneath that uh, is the Unicom frequency of 122.95. So if we landed at the airport in a manned airplane, we needed fuel, that's the frequency we'd actually call on, the Unicom frequencies. Don't get confused with that. At some airports, the CTAF and the Unicom are the same thing. But some airports like this, at the Fort Lauderdale Executive, the, the uh, CTAF or the control tower frequency is also this frequency. The Unicom is this frequency. The ATIS is this frequency. Do you follow me with that? Let's say the tower asked you for a position report when you get on station. You may say something like Fort Lauderdale Executive Tower, get the name right, drone 123, um, operate one mile to the north below 300 feet AGL. Now let's take a look at Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport. It's surrounded by magenta. That tells us it's what kind of airspace? Class C, 
Class Charlie airspace, so it means it also has a tower. The frequency for that tower reads as 119.3. And then there's the ATIS below that, you see, and then there's the UNICOM as well. There's also the letters AOE. This just means it's an airport of entry. Uh, it has a customs facility. Let's move over a little bit now. Let's look at the North Perry Airport. Do you see that there? There's a segmented blue line. It's what kind of airspace? Class D, Class Delta. There's a control tower frequency of 132.1. The asterisk next to that tells us it's a part-time tower. So when the controllers go home for the night, the airport becomes a pilot-controlled airport with the pilot self-announcing their positions on that same frequency, 132.1. That's the early example when I said the, the control tower frequency becomes the CTAF frequency when the tower goes home for the night. Notice also there's a heavy blue line here. That tells us that the North Perry Airport lies beneath some Class Bravo airspace. Do you also see the RP next to 10 R and 19 R? Well, it, that tells us that there's right traffic for those runways. So there's right traffic for runway 10 right and 19 er right. Runway 10 right and runway 19 right. It's really 19 er right is how that would be properly read. Here's a real world suggestion though. Write down the frequencies before each mission just so you don't have to wrestle with the sectional chart or the TAC or just try to find something in the field. You're going to see a lot of questions on your test asking about airport frequencies. So make sure you can distinguish between the weather frequency, whether it's an ATIS, ASOS, AWOS, it doesn't matter, it's all automated weather, and the actual communications frequencies. And don't slip up on the control tower versus the Unicom frequency. Control tower is just what it sounds like. Unicom frequency is for grabbing fuel in a manned aircraft, whatever that may be. Just study those up, maybe even head over to skyvector.com real quick and pull up some airports in your local area and pull up the frequencies for those as well. And I'll see you all in the next video. So hopefully after watching that, frequencies just aren't as confusing as they once were now, are they? Listen, if you're not already in the course, there's a whole brand new course out there. We're migrating everything over from remotepot101.com over to m0a.com, which is our manned aviation site. We've been at that over 10 years now, uh, continuing to be the leader in FAA test preparation. There's links to all what I'm talking about in the descriptions below. Can't wait to read your comments on YouTube, on Facebook, on it, on m0a.com. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and most importantly, remember, a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, everyone. We'll see you.